Coppold as we are 15 minutes to the top of the hour, but our update continues as uh, Joe says, to Chicago we go, and a good friend Todd Horwich is there helping us out and understanding these markets. So what a run it's been, Todd. Uh, I want to get your thoughts here from when we talked last. I wasn't here last week after the holiday, so kind of give us an update in your view of kind of this market strategy if we have one now. Well, Mark, you know, we've, we've had obviously a great run, and welcome back, by the way. Well, nice thank to see you. you back here. We've had a great run here, and of course, you know, we were talking about this months ago that we we're going to see this type of rally. So we've gotten really expected what we what we wanted, and we've got a beautiful rally, had a chance to really clean out and, and sell some of the old stuff. We've got, you know, much higher prices going into the new season. But this is a time when farmers and producers and traders all forget what their objective is, and they sometimes become a little bit too greedy up here. I, I think when you get to levels where we are now, the way the market has gone up, and basically what we would call a parabolic straight line higher, yeah. That cannot be sustained. And it's, I'm not worried. I'm not bearish like we're going back down. I, I, I still love the space, as I continue to call it. But I do believe we need some pretty good selling here that will actually build on more momentum back to the upside. And when we get these parabolic ranges, I think we have a tendency to forget that we get a little bit greedy. Yeah. And that's one of the things that will happen here. I think we have to worry about locking in some profits up here or taking some off the table here. And if it, if it is, you do some marketing here now, whatever, 5%, 10%. And you hope I get just the worst price you get for the year. You can only, if you move higher, you're only going to get better. That's 100% correct. Again, really, we're trying to remember, we've got a long time to harvest now. We've got a long time until like Novi beans and Deese corn and wheat. And so a lot can happen between now and then. Sure. And we might get an opportunity if we took a little bit off here. And I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm not saying sell it. I'm saying figure out a way to hedge it or protect it. If we get a sell off, we could benefit from the downside and then carry it all back up to the upside again. There's a way that you do these things and understanding how the market works and what's going on is important. And what we're seeing here is a little bit of mix in the dollar. You've got, you know, the outside influences the Fed, they report next week, yep. and the jobs number last week was a big disaster for the dollar. So we're going to see how this all plays out, but I think it's not it's not a final score, and I would look for some selling pressure to show up here. And, and the dollar, by the way, just a little bit higher as we speak right now. I want you to speak to those people who are buying grain now. There may be a livestock producer. They're buying meal if they're a pork producer. And what's their strategy if we are at these uh, historic levels uh, early in this growing season? What do you say to them, Todd? Well, I think one of the things that, you know, one of the things we like to work on all the time is actually helping the buyers and the sellers because yeah. you can also hedge to the upside and hedge your and lock your price and what you're paying. You know, one of the most important things you do when you're marketing is know what it's going to cost you so you can figure out how much money you can make based on your cost. So you can actually hedge the other side and you can hedge to the upside while still giving yourself the opportunity. In other words, we don't have to go out and pay 4 to 20 for corn right now. We can lock in that price, but if corn falls, we can move our price down and better benefit from the lower price, but if corn continues to go higher, then we get the benefit of paying that 420, even if it's at 450. So there's a lot you can do here, and this is where you have to kind of understand how the market works and the logic, and really how to say, you know what, I am running a business, let me take care of my business and make sure I understand my costs and my marketing plan. And they can go to BubbaTrading.com to learn more about that, and you're glad to help them out, whether buying 100%. or selling grain. Todd, 100%. I want to give the numbers here, hang on, I'll come back to you in about a minute, and we'll talk about the livestock trade. Todd Horwitz, live from Chicago. Corn is down, not much, about a half a cent to a penny and a half across the board. Soybeans, after the big run yesterday, down a little bit as well, not much. July, new crop uh, nearby down three. November, interestingly, is still higher, three quarters of a cent higher. So a quieter trade there today, much quieter than yesterday. And our wheat trade at this moment, we are still higher. July, Chicago up four. Kansas City, the nearby, up four and a quarter. And Kansas, or Minneapolis, July, is up two and a half cents. Back to Chicago in one minute more with Todd Horwitz, the livestock trade. We come right back.